Hey guys, it is Monday morning and I have no clue what I want to do. <laughs> I've actually been stressing over this a little bit because all weekend long I, I, I've just had some creative blocks or something. I just, and then I'm stressing over, well, I need to have a video. <laughs> I need to make a video for the templates. We just started this album. We just started this set of templates. There's no excuse. You should be, you should be overflow with, with ideas. But I'm just, to be honest, I have to confess, I am just at a creative block, 100%. I mean, I keep messing around with things. I have lots of ideas, just nothing is coming together. And I hate that, and I feel so bad, and I feel like I'm letting you guys down. I really, really do. I was talking to my husband about it last night and he was like just t tell him <laughs> just tell him what's going on Emma. tell him how you feel and I gave it some thought and I thought well there is some things we could do we could sit and chat and I could show you a few things that we're going to be needing anyway and it's not super exciting but at least it's you know something and it could help uh, get my mind right. I mean, we have just been so busy, you guys. So busy. There was some health things. There's, there is, uh, you know, the grandbabies, babysitting the grandbabies. There's the garden. You know, all these things have been consuming my time and my mind. And Mother's Day just passing. You know, I don't know. I was watching a video this morning from uh, Roots and Refuge, and she was talking about grief, and it's and something she said, just kind of hit home, you know? Sometimes we just don't allow ourselves to grieve, and, and then it sneaks up on you and hits you in the wrong way instead of in a happy way, like, things remind you of things, you know, and, and if you don't allow yourself to grieve, what does she call it? Does she say she said grieve well, you know, if you don't allow yourself to do that, sometimes it comes back and just smacks you in your face and just punches you in your gut and just stops you dead in your tracks and in a bad way, you know. So anyways, um, so I've been, I've been kind of on a little bit of a roller coaster the past, you know, month, really. I know a lot of you are, do not, probably do not care, and that's fine. And I, I completely understand. But I just thought I would just turn the camera on and start talking. And I'm going to show you some stuff. I do want to show you what I've been playing around with. Because we made these beautiful covers, and I have ideas of what I want to do on this cover, right? This was the last video. I have some ideas, but I just don't have it complete in my mind yet. So I was messing around with some stuff, and I'll just show you. I made these little booklets. Aren't these cute? I wanted to use these as an insert so i wanted to use these on the cover uh just this is part of the paper collection you guys i think it's this page right here so it's a full page and the two that are on this side i made in two little two little booklets so there's a two-sided right so this one was like on here i think so there's the other side of that so I thought that was really cute. And I wanted to kind of use one of those on the cover. And then another page I was messing around with was, I think it was this one. I think it was on this side. I might be wrong. It might be the other way around. I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure it was this page. Yeah. And I was thinking about using this on the cover. Which I thought was really pretty, right? To see that gold peeking around. 
so I just don't know. So these are the kind of the things I've been playing around with. I just don't have a complete picture. So I decided to not, and I think this might be one of the reasons why I've had a little bit of a block as well, because I don't have a complete picture of what I want to do on the cover. So I keep making little things to see if anything's going to be like, yeah, that's it. That's what you want to do. <laughs> but it hasn't quite come together yet. So I decided to pause on trying to finish the cover. So then I moved my attention to let's start on the pages. And then that created another block because I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to present the videos this time around. Oh look, I even cut that one a lot shorter than, I didn't even realize I did that. I don't remember doing that. That's funny. I wonder why I did that. No telling. But don't, aren't those cute? Oh, I got some new string. I guess I could show you that too. Look at this. It's got gold. It's new Baker's twine and it's got gold in it. Isn't that pretty? I will add this to my Amazon. Well, if I can find it. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. Pretty sure. But anyway, I like this. Super pretty. So I did the stitching uh, on the little books with this. I just thought it was pretty. Okay, so let me put this aside. I think what I want to show you is the... Okay, so... <laughs> after all that I will put a playlist to this album up here and down below and I'll put a timestamp to skip over the awful <laughs> intro to this video if you want to uh, if you need to come back and reference this so we have this type of binding this is the accordion uh, elastic binding so we did this in the last video so the, the playlist to this is linked in the cards and down below so you need a few things for that and to add the pages to it I mean so if you if you did the hard spine you would want to use page p3 so this is the hard spine prototype right and you would just attach your pages to the to the uh, binding fin okay to the binding hinge and you would attach your fin from your page to that so, but this one's a little bit different since it's the accordion one. Uh, this right here, page P5, this is the page for covers to each section in your accordion album. Oh, that is my printer. <laughs> so this page is bigger than the actual page. What do I got stuffed in here? So what I did, why is that there? Matt for page P5. Oh, because there's two on that page. Okay. <laughs> so what I did was I made myself a template for the covers. So it's going to be longer. It's going to be wider than the actual pages. So this is for like the outside. So if each individual fin had a cover, this would be it. Okay. So what I thought... This is kind of how my morning is going, you guys. My camera just shut off. I forgot to check the battery to see if it was <laughs> if it was in full strength. So, anyway, so I made this because you could take. Sorry, I've got my, my back to you. You could take a full sheet of paper and trace this on here if you wanted to, or you could take a full sheet of. Uh, I'm thinking it, you could also use an eight and a half by 11. I've got one printed here where you could trace it and make it a whole sheet instead of piecing it together. So I thought that would be a good idea to do for the covers for the journal inserts and also do it for the base pages so that if you wanted to trace it onto a whole sheet of paper, you could. So it wouldn't be in, in three parts. It would just be in two, or just be in one part. <laughs> I think I know what I'm saying. I think you guys will pick up what I'm, pick up from what I'm saying here in just a second. So, 
so I've made one for the for the journal covers, right? And then so what I did is I printed page P5 off twice, right? And cut it out. And then I printed page P6 off, which is this one right here. So these are the hinges for when you're using the elastic binding. And so I've only used one. I used this one to create this traceable template, okay? So I'm gonna use this again, and I'll put this up because I don't need another mat <laughs> for that page. So I'm gonna use this again, and then I printed page P7, which is the actual main base page. I printed that off twice, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make that traceable template for that. So if you wanted to uh, trace onto your scrapbook paper, or if you wanted to trace onto uh, your eight and a half by 11 paper, or if you just wanna see how to make the, how to put it together in the first place, this would be the video to go to. Cause you can literally make all your pages while you're using the elastic binding. You can make all your pages this exact way. So, what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut all of these, I'm gonna cut, well first of all, I'm gonna cut one, one of these out. This is my Fiskars Precision Paper Trimmer. And it's dusty, ooh, it's dusty. I'm gonna give you guys a little tip. I'm gonna scoot you way in, or I'm gonna try to anyway. Way in. Look how dirty it is, oh my goodness. Okay, can you guys see? I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's been a lot of questions about this paper trimmer lately. So I just wanted to show you really quick why I love this paper trimmer so much and how to use it with my templates. Okay, so I just need to make sure my fingers are in the right spot. So there is a plastic sleeve that comes down. There is a metal metal edge right here. It's kind of sharp, so be careful. And then the rotary trimmer gets sharpened every time it goes against that edge, so you don't have to replace the blade on this ever, okay? Unless you really jack something up somehow. So when you are trying to line up your template, you wanna line your template. I'm trying to find the edge here. There we go. So here's, what I, here's where I want to cut. Let me point. Here is where I want to cut this line right here. So I'm going to line this line up to that metal edge, not the plastic. The plastic piece is about a sixteenth or one thirty-second of an inch away from the metal edge. So you don't want to line it up to that. You want to line it up to the metal edge. So in my case, you can see the entire line is on the other side of this plastic piece. So I've matched it up at the top and the bottom along this metal edge, not the plastic piece. And after a while, you will be able to, to be able to judge between the amount of distance between this plastic piece and that metal piece. And it's a perfect cut every time. So the reason I love this paper trimmer so much is A, you can line it up like that, and B, you never have to replace your blade. It also cuts through thicker materials, and it cuts through many, many pages if you need it to. It's just a really heavy duty uh, paper trimmer. All right, let me scooch back out. Okay, so we just need one of those. Oh, well, I'll put my paper trimmer away like I'm finished. You're not finished. <laughs> One of those, and then I am going to trim both of these pages out. I'm gonna remove all four of those tabs, all four. And I'm gonna cut, and so that's another thing too. If you bump your page up to this paper trimmer, when you print things out, sometimes your printer may suck it in a little crooked, or maybe I have it on there a little crooked. There's no telling, but you just need to line up 
the line that you want to cut with the metal edge. So if you bump it up and it's crooked, don't be like, well, it's, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be. No, you want to line the top and the bottom of this to the metal edge of your paper trimmer, right? So you cut that piece off. I'm going to flip mine around and cut this piece off. Right, I, I keep all of these because we might need these for tags and things like that. So keep all of your uh, white bits that you cut away. Okay, so then I'm going to cut the top tab off and the bottom tab off. Okay, so I got all my pieces cut. I'm keeping my scraps. Next thing I want to do is I'm trying to find my, here it is. <laughs> I was trying to find this. I thought I had it out. So on this hinge piece here, there's a little area, a little half circle. Oops, I didn't get it perfectly straight. You want to cut both of these out. Like that. So remember, we're making a template here. We're making a traceable template. And then I'm going to take my scoreboard and I'm going to go ahead and score all three of those lines like that. And I'm gonna prep them. I'm gonna prep two of them for sure. Well, go ahead and prep them all. Right? So let's check to see if they're the same height. Sometimes I just trim out so bad that they're not the same height. <laughs> and it just is what it is, you know? I don't know, it just is what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna put some tape on each one of these sides here. You could use glue if you would like. Then I'm going to burnish those. Okay, so then I'm just going to take one side and I think I'll line up the bottom. So what you want to do is you want to not go over that first. So if you're coming from the right, the first line would be this one. Do not pass that. You want to butt right up next to it. Take your time. You can use the glue stick trick here if you want to, to give yourself some wiggle room. So it looks like that. So yeah, I didn't trim out 100% perfectly, but I'm okay with that. I am perfectly okay with that. So then I'm gonna flip it around, take the tape backing off at this side. And this time I'm going to try to match up that bottom piece over there because those are both the same. And put that on there. I did pretty good. <laughs> I did okay. So it looks like I may have cut this one a little crooked on the top there. But here, let's see if let's see if it's a big difference. Get my paper trimmer out, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it flush. I'm gonna make this top part flush with the metal edge, and it looks like I did cut this page slightly crooked. So, yeah. So nothing got cut off. You see that? So this is this page here just got cut 
it's right on this edge, but then I cut a little crooked down on this edge, so it's okay. So now we have, oh, let's burnish that into place really quick. So now we have a template. So if we wanted to make, let me grab a piece of white cardstock. So if we wanted to make, instead of having to put this together every time, I mean, it, it's okay if you did, because then you would already have your distressed edges and everything. But if you wanted it to be one solid piece, then you would lay it down right on your cardstock. Then you can mark it. Whoop. And you need to mark. You need to mark where that half circle is as well. And see, that's crooked. <laughs> you need to mark this end here. And then you need to mark this half circle here. Right? So then you cut it out. And I'm going off of this line and not this line because of the way the template, because of the way I uh, cut it a little crooked to begin with. Let's get my scoreboard back out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line that little half circle. I'm going to line one point up on my scoreboard up here with this where I've made this black line and then this other point down here where it's you know the line continues on and I'm going to score here here and then here and it's crooked good job Jen she let it get crooked <laughs> don't let it get crooked okay here here in here. So then you would prep it just the same way. All right, so you did that, and then you would take and punch out your little half circles. I'm going to erase my crooked line. So now, I'm on the right side, so now I have the exact same thing as what we just made, except it's one solid piece instead of having to put it together like that. Okay? So they go into the page. So here's how here's how it works. So these are all main base pages. And then here's the cover. So you'll see that the cover, it's the same height, it's just wider. And that way you can make a cover for each individual section if you want to. Now we may not because we're kind of making this a hybrid. We're making, we may make one of them kind of like a journal, journal cover, like here. This one is, you know, a journal cover because it's mostly just, you know, junk journal pages, right? We may make one of them with a journal cover, but most of the pages are gonna be using the main base page uh, P7. So yeah, so that's how they go up underneath there. That's why you do the notch and you can make as many as you want. You can make a bunch of these ahead of time and then you can just build on top of them, however you wanna do it. So anyway, I thought I could at least show you something in today's video and I hope you guys understand and give me some grace. I'm, I'm, um, I think I'm trying too hard to, I'm trying too hard I'm just trying too hard. <laughs> There's been some ugliness going around on YouTube. There's been some negativity going around. Everybody is just 
everybody's just being real sassy these days and that'll tear you down that'll tear your creativity down quickly and some people take a lot of joy in trying to tear people down and so anyway I don't want to give those people any joy but I also don't want to let you guys down and I just kind of wanted to let you know what was happening and to let you know that I am I'm I'm here. I'm working. I'm doing. I'm, I'm working. I'm just not getting anywhere at the moment. So, anyway, you guys, I love you guys, and I will see you guys next time.